Okay, shalom, shalom. Come here, shalom. Koho loimla, yahawo. Bahashim, yahawo shai, bahashim, kakadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule well, and that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. Just want to say the water to all the Akim, Akwaf, that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, to the best of their ability. This is Jachanan the Waf, just coming at you with another quick lesson and praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And I uh, wanted to touch on this article. It says American slavery wasn't just a white man's business. New research shows how white women profited too. And of course they did. You know, of course they did. You got, you know, the, the little blonde hair, blue eyed um, Becky, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, they got you thinking she's the sweetest thing in the world. <laughs> but nah, man, that slavery shit was brutal, man. On you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Because it was done to all of us as a nation, which are the children of Israel. And you see, these people are going to have to pay for this. And when you see stories like this, What's happening is, matter of fact, let me get um, a quick scripture. We'll get into some of this. What's happening is that man of sin, that son of perdition is being revealed according to um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And, it, um, and from the top, it's, it's entitled Man of Lawlessness. In the New Living Translation over here to the right, it says events prior to the Lord's second coming. Um, right? Right. So I'm going to start from the top. It says, now we beseech you, brethren. Matter of fact, let me read it in the NLT, the New Living Translation, right? It says, now, dear brothers and sisters, let us clarify some things about the coming of the Lord, Jesus Christ. They say Jesus Christ, but we know his name is Yahawashai, which means he's the Savior or Deliverer in the Paleo-Hebrew. There was no letter J when the Lord walked the earth, man. The letter J was invented in 1524. And we like to always bring that out for the newcomers and um, new listeners, um, there's no letter J in Hebrew. There's no letter E in Hebrew. No letter O, no letter U, no letter V. Those um, vowel points or those sounds come from Esau Edom, the so-called white man. He created those sounds. Those sounds didn't exist. They don't, and they're not in the Hebrew alphabet at all. So we have to bring that out and let our people know that our Lord and Savior, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, and speckled bird, we call it, you know, the speckled bird as far as, um, because it's not a color thing. See, Esau, the so-called white man, that's why we say so-called, he came up with all these colors, man, as nationalities and ethnicities and shit. A color is not a, um, a ethnicity, man. There's no such thing as white people. There's no such thing as black people. Just different shades of pink people or reddish people and different shades of brown people on the earth. No one's looking like a glass of milk and no one's looking like a damn car tire, man. It's just simple, you know, but these are social constructs that he came up with basically to hide himself. So now in this particular um, what I'm about to read is going to show you that he's starting to be revealed. That's how we know that our Lord is coming soon. He's, he's on the way, man. You know what I'm saying? It's only a few more, um, uh, uh, two more major prophecies that's got to come to pass as far as the, um, you got the MOTB, the market of beauty and the beast, which they want to, you know, start to implant people. And then you have World War Three and those things are being spoken on on a day to day basis, man. Those things are, are coming to pass. OK, but anyway, let me read this back again. And also the true name of the father is Yahweh. Let me not. Um, you know, we got to let, let our people know. Hey, look, the true name of the father is Yahweh, which means that he exists with the existing one. And the true name of his son is Yahweh Shai. So so keep that in mind. Get those names down pat and call on those names. The Lord is the name is not Jesus, man. No, no blonde hair, blue eyed white guys coming back to save no one. That is a complete lie. That is an idol. The Lord, if he was walking the earth today, he would be a Negro. He would be a so-called black man. And they know that. It's not like they don't know. And, and you got these so-called white people, man. They get really offended because you know what? That white Jesus stumbling block, man, is being overturned. Like, people not believing in that shit no more, man. Because the Hebrew Israelites are out on the highways and byways. And it's common knowledge now. You know, over these past couple of years, man, it's been real, real tight on Esau out here, man. People starting to see him for who he really is. And, and it's about to go into that. So let's get it again. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse one and the NLT starting there. Now, dear brothers and sisters, let us clarify some things about the coming of the Lord. Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, the Messiah, the anointed one and how we and how we would and how we will be gathered to meet him. 
Don't be so easily shaken or alarmed by those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. Don't believe them. Even if they claim to have had a spiritual vision of a revelation or a letter supposedly from us. Don't be fooled by what they say for that day will not come until there is a great rebellion against God or Yahweh and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The one who brings destruction. See? And that's Esau. That's the so-called white man. He's the one. He's the man of lawlessness. He's the one that brings great destruction. Everybody in the whole damn earth is miserable, man, because this man is in charge. He done ran the planet into the ground. No, you got you got, um, um, uh, the, the, you know, this man is he's 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 letting off nuclear weapons in the damn oceans, blowing up whales. And shit. You know, he's letting off nuclear weapons in the atmosphere. You, the air quality is trash. The water quality is trash. He's got GMO foods all over the place. You can barely get fresh fruits and vegetables. You know, everybody's sickly. All these different damn, you know, it's just this man being in control has controlled this earth, has um, um, completely destroyed this earth, man, this planet. And the Lord is going to um, deal with this man soon. Verse four says he will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. He will even sit in the temple of God, claiming that he, he himself is God. And what did he do? To, how did he do that? He done that with white Jesus. He gave you a white God. He gave you white angels. He gave you white apostles, white prophets. You know, every damn movie you see is all looking like them. Right. And then he went throughout the world and he enslaved. The very, you know, he enslaved the very holy people with his white Jesus idol, man. Anyway, let's go off into some of this. Because we know that so-called white women profited from this. And not only did they profit from it, you know, they was, they was out here being little freaks, too. You know? And still to this very day, you know what I'm saying? They, they, them, them, why you think you see so, so many so-called white women at, at them NBA games? <laughs> and, and, and NFL, and, you know, they trying to get them one of them, um, one of them dudes, man. They, they, they want that BBC. Like for real, for real, and it is what it is, man. They they was even a lot. matter of fact. I'm trying. I can't think of what movie that was. Yeah, but it was a so-called white woman. It was a slave movie, but it was a so-called white woman in it. She she had some um, you know, she owned all kinds of slaves, but she was dealing with a different black dude every night. She was she was dealing with one of the slaves every night. She 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 was dealing with him. She she pretty much she 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 bought certain mandingos. Because she wanted to get down. I forgot what movie that was. Anyway, let's go off into some of this stuff. It says that the United States continue to confront the realities and legacy of slavery. Americans continue to challenge myths about the country's history. One enduring myth is that slavery was a largely male endeavor. That, for the most part, the buying, selling, trading, and profiting from enslavement were carried out by white men alone. While white women certainly interacted with the enslaved people in households, management and day to day tasks, historians once argued that they weren't active owners and had very limited involvement in transactions. This was this was once widely believed to be the reason why southern white women supported the institution. They were assumed to be blind to its darker sides. You know, and, and you know, um, 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 Esau, man, the so-called white man, he was going out there. He was dealing with the, with the so-called black woman and the so-called white woman was dealing with the so-called black man. And it's a bunch of damn tears running around here, too. It's a bunch of so-called um, um, you'll see somebody. They can be as dark as um, um, Wesley Snipes, man. And they can be a so-called white person because the seed line goes through your father. You are exactly what your daddy is. And see, Esau, he would go off into those, you know, go off into, you know, um, little, little, little shed at night. And a lot of the times, the white, you know, his wife would know. That's why she, she had, you know, you see these movies where the, 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 the so-called white woman, she's got so much hatred towards certain slave women. You know what I'm saying? In those movies, because she knew that her husband was hitting them, but it wasn't nothing she could do about it. So she would take it out on that slave. You know, but anyway, plenty of movies on shit like that. So Esau give you some truth sometimes, you know what I'm saying? But see this right here, shameful spewing on them. It says, um, while white women, let me see, uh, it says, um, and 
As an expert in the economic history of slavery, I know the story is far more complex. In fact, slavery was unique in economically empowering women. It was, in essence, an early feminist institution, but exclusively for white women. See? A lasting myth. The myth that women didn't profit from slavery has endured for several reasons. First, before the American Civil War, married women generally owned nothing of their own. The legal institution of coverture made the property a woman brought into her marriage into the property of her husband. And that's generally how it goes, too. You know, that was, the, you know, pretty much that was ancient day stuff, too. This also meant that if a husband was in debt, a creditor could claim the wife's property for payment. In addition, there are very few surviving records that show Southern white women discussing the business of slavery. And finally, in cases where women were owners of enslaved people, say through the death of a husband, they often use agents or male relatives to handle their affairs. Added together, there's very little to suggest that white women were deeply involved in slavery. Researchers have started to challenge this view. <coughs> Researchers have uh, started to challenge this view by moving beyond the traditional archival sources. The innovative historian Stephanie Jones Rogers has documented how regularly white women were seen in all aspects of American enslavement. Her most compelling evidence comes from interviews with the formerly enslaved people themselves who noted who they were owned by and explained how belonging to the missuses affected every aspect of their life. The white feminists of American slavery. It says historians have also started grappling with the ways American slavery was uniquely gender egalitarian, at least for, the, for white women. While northern women were trapped in coverture, southern states were bypassing coverture, especially, by, especially for purpose of giving married, giving married women rights to own slave people enslaved people. The earliest such act passed in the United States was the Mississippi Married Women's Property Law of 1839. The law explicitly awarded white, married white women ownership status over enslaved individual, individuals. Slavery was the driver of this change. See? Four or five sections of the act refer only to property and enslaved people. Okay? So let's get, let's get a quick scripture real quick. That, hey man. <laughs> Matter of fact, let me get that shameful spewing one real quick. See, all these things are see that that man of sin is starting to be revealed. People starting to see who it is. And, and, and that's talking about the man of sin is Esau. Basically, you know what I'm saying? But or the son of perdition, you know what I'm saying? That's Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. But he is the progenitor of that of a race of people. So he goes off into the goes off into the entire race. It's not looking good for E right now. Habakkuk 2 and 16. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also and let the foreskin and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of Yahweh's right hand shall be turned unto thee and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. See, so now you're starting to see all the things that they glorified in. You know, they, they you know, removed a bunch of statues, got rid of a bunch of shit. You know what I'm saying? We don't want people to know. You know, because um, really they trying to just cover up history. If you if Esau were to rule another generation, two generations, three generations, you wouldn't even know about no slavery. That shit would be out of here. You know what I'm saying? Because they would they would cover it all up. This is his goal. This is what he's trying to do. Well, see, the Lord require it to pass. See, they're not going to get away with um the things that they've done. Let's get that. um. I think it's um, Ecclesiastes 3. Yep, Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and Yahweh requireth that which is past. So the Lord, he's requiring his past, man. He, he's not going to, the Lord hasn't forgotten about these things that these people have done to us, man. We are the apple of the Lord's eye. And though our people, you know, we're downtrodden as hell, man. We, we, we really are in a messed up position. But that was all punishment from Yahweh Bashimel Shah man for disobedience. But now he's starting to deal with us again. And, and soon we're going to be out of the hands of our enemies, according to Luke chapter one. That's the whole reason for the Lord coming. 
Don't let these Christians tell you about how everybody is going to be saved. No, that's, this is not a universal um, um, religion, man. This is not for all people. The Lord only made contracts. Uh, he made a contract with the children of Israel. He didn't make no contract with no, 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 um, no other nations, man. You know, you got these damn Christians out here running around out here talking about how the Lord loves everybody. The Lord don't love everybody, man. Come on, bro. That's a complete damn lie. Well, let's see what else they got in here. Oh, and um, yeah, let's go back into this real quick by the spirit. We, we, we'll grab more scriptures by the spirit. OK, uh, where's we at? So they had this Mississippi Act in 1839. OK, it says similar acts were passed by other southern states in the antebellum era to shield married women from responsibilities of their husband's debts. And also to allow women to independently accumulate wealth during marriage. Of course, laws on the books may not reflect how people actually behave. But new research shows that white women were very involved in the business of slavery. Right. In states where enslaved people were titled property like a house or a car today. Sales were recorded with names of buyers, sellers and names of the enslaved people in the transaction. White women in states where legislation formally protected their property rights to enslaved property were much more likely to be active in the market. And here you go. They got this Hewlett and Bright. The motherfuckers probably got a damn business around to this very day. Valuable slaves, right? Yeah, boy. Hey, y'all got to pay, man. And then you'll have Esau, they'll get to talking about how, you know, forget about it. That was a long time ago. That's in the past. Why are you so, you know, when you mention it, you know, they don't want you talking about it. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. They don't want you talking about nothing about no slavery. But guess what they're going to do in a few more weeks here? They're going to celebrate 4th of July, which was in 1776. But tell one of these so-called white people, you don't celebrate 4th of July because it was a long time ago. Oh, why y'all celebrate that? That was a long time ago. <laughs> they man, you irate. Them motherfuckers turn redder than fucking brake lights on an ambulance, man. How dare you? Let me tell one of these so-called white people you don't celebrate Independence Day. Get out of here, man. You'll see how they you you, you, you you'll see, man, how, how they get down for real. Further analysis of these records show that white women were involved in nearly a third of all transactions. Buying and selling in equal proportions, white women were especially likely to buy and sell enslaved women, making up nearly 40 percent of the people doing the buying and selling. Enslaved women were especially econo economically valuable because if someone owned an enslaved woman, they automatically became the owner of all her children. True. For slave owners, owning an enslaved woman was an intergenerational wealth building activity. And to this very day, see, Esau got us in his hands to this very day, man. This motherfucker done had us about 500 years. You know? And, they, and, 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 and you know, they, they, they you know, them fool the world and they're thinking that this shit is over with. Oh, we're, we're, no, we're righteous now. We, you know, yeah, we made mistakes. They'll t give you a little shit like that when they want your vote. You know? But us being here 500 years later, you can't leave this man's country. You're not leaving America without this man's credentials. That's for damn sure. They're going to lock your ass up. They're going to lock you up. You better have his, his ID. You better have his birth certificate. You better have his social security number. See, that's all. That's all. What, what, you know, because we're the property of this man. I mean, we're the property of Yahweh by Shemel was shy, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> we are. This man owns us. And so the Lord is coming back to get what's his. And they're going to pay and the Lord going to give them double, man. The Lord said double that the double. They're going to drink the dregs of that cup, man. See, they thinking everything is all fine and sweet. They don't, and, and, and they really don't think that America is ever going to fall. But it's actually happening. Right before their very eyes. And they still, <laughs> the Lord got them in a trick bag where well, they still don't believe it. <laughs> right? But this right here, man, hey, this is right here. Let me see. Let me get that one since. I'm going to get this one. Um, it's locked. Psalms chapter 64. In verse eight. See, this is this is great history, man. See, they, they, they would like for this history to be gone. They don't want stuff like this coming out. But why does it keep coming out? 
Why you think they want to get rid of TikTok so bad? TikTok been tearing the asses up, man, because people starting to see, God damn, y'all motherfuckers is vicious. Damn, it's all kinds of uh, a slavery hook. <laughs> people talking about every time you look up, it's something different. Like, God damn, I didn't, I didn't know that. Damn, they done us like that. So, and 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 to think about it, it's certain things that haven't even been mentioned. You know what I'm saying? So the Lord, He's gonna show us those things, man. The, the actual backdrop shit that they was doing. See, Esau do a lot of backdrop shit that we don't even know about. These are just a few of the things that come to the forefront. Psalm 64 and 8, so they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. So they're making their own tongue to fall upon themselves. Basically, they're telling on each other. They're telling on themselves. They're telling on themselves. And they, and they really don't think that they're going to pay for these things, bro. And matter of fact, let me get this one, too, in Isaiah. Because they'll tell you, well, I had nothing to do with that. I had nothing to do with slavery. I had nothing to do. None of you are slaves and none of you. you know, we're not owners of you. And, uh, you know, no, nah, man, we still in, in captivity. We're still in your fucking hands, man. This is Isaiah 14 and 21. It says, prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. So the Lord is going to prepare slaughter for their children for the iniquity of their fathers. Why? Because they are their fathers. Just came back in reincarnation, basically born through, you know, because that's what, what what birth is pretty much overall. You know, they're going to the Lord going to deal with these people, man. They, they're not getting away with this shit. Trust me. Trust me. When, and, and, and it's crazy, bro, that that you, you got um these so-called black people go to these churches and believe in, in white. Man, I'm so glad the Lord got me out of that bullshit. And they're so goddamn forgiving. Okay, you done forgave these people for all the shit that they've done to us. And, 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 and they don't care. You, you really forgiving them for nothing because they'll, they still going to dog your ass out, especially when Jacob's trouble really pop off. Anyway, it says the historical irony. We are left to confront a deep irony in American history. American history. Slavery gave white women in the South significantly, significantly, more economic independence than those in the north and they use this freedom with remarkable regula regularity women in slave states had legal rights to property that was half of the wealth in the southern united states at the time women in the north could only dream of such economic independence while historians once claimed that white women supported the confederacy because they were blind to the reality of slavery Researchers now know that they could have been motivated by the same economic impulses as their husbands. Slavery was actually a more gender egalitarian institution than other forms of property or wealth accumulation. So it's not surprising that white women would have vested interest in it. And that's it, man. <laughs> hey, man. And you know them comments, man. These so-called white people, boy, they hate when stories like this come out and, and, and they push their asses on blast, bro. That's where you see all the comments of, well, no one's enslaved today and we didn't have anything to do with it. But what does the scripture say, man? We just read it. <laughs> prepare slaughter. Isaiah 14 to 21 again. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities, man. And this is coming. Y'all not going to be able to build no more fucking cities, man. Y'all not going to have you know, all these concrete jungles y'all done built up. These goddamn, these, these, these cities, y'all, these caves that y'all call cities. Nah, ain't going to be no more of that there. Y'all not going to be in control or nothing like that, though. Only thing y'all going to be building up, y'all going to be building up the kingdom for uh, uh, the children of Israel, man. It's Revelation 13. Let me start at verse 9. It says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. It don't say that they might, you know, because you reap what you sow. You, you, y'all going into slavery, man. He that leadeth into captivity. See, it, it sounds so unreal. See, because these proud ass Americans, man, they really just think that this place is going to carry on for another hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand years. They, they, they can't fathom America falling. They can't fathom it. That's why you got all these I'm proud of being American songs and all that bullshit. Because they're prideful, man. 
And the scriptures talks about a um a, 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 a pride coming before a fall. You're not gonna get a more prideful country than, and even these so-called blacks. It's crazy, bro. You motherfuckers are slaves, and y'all bragging on America like this y'all shit. It's crazy, bro. The Lord is gonna deal with two thirds of Jake too, cause Jake not gonna 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 listen, man. You no, know, two thirds of Jake gonna get the business right along with Esau, and they'll just have to be born back into the kingdom through the elect. But anyway, it says, "He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must." See? Must be killed with the sword. It don't say he might be. Here is the patience of the faith of the saints. So this is coming to a theater near you, you so-called white people, man. Y'all gotta pay for all that shit y'all done. The Lord really set y'all up in a trick bag, man. I went a man, boy. Oh, what's that scripture? Uh it's in Psalms. Ah, I can't think of what chapter that is. Let me see. Whew, man, I ain't telling. It's like you bear with me real quick here. I probably shouldn't have done it that way, dude. I just done. Let me see. It's like you. Let me back up some. It's in a book of Psalms somewhere. Oh, yep, this is it right here, Psalm 73. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, let me see, uh, Psalm 73 and 17, it says, Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Surely thou didst set them in a slippery place, <laughs> set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. Yeah, man, hey, look, man, hey. <laughs> you know, because it starts off saying, um, let me go up to the top here, verse 3. It says, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. So he was envious, like, man, I can't, you know, like, shit, they got everything, you know. Verse four says, for there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Right. Therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. And like, like I said, you know what I'm saying? You go into the comment boards, man. They, they, they speak real loftily of this shit. These are some proud ass people, man. So the Lord going to break their asses down. And they're not going to be, they're, they're, they're not going to believe, bro. It's Because <laughs> like I said, again, when you really look at America and you look at the state of, you know, you could clearly see they're falling now, but they're still on top. You know, this is their kingdom. And they can't fathom. I had somebody tell me on my comment board yesterday that, um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm mad about so-called white people being on top. Yeah, I guess I am a little bit, but you know what I'm saying? But the shit that they were saying, I'm just like, well, shit, you just admitting that, you know what I'm saying? Pretty much your pride and, 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 and you know, you're admitting that you are the ones that's in control. So thank you for that. Because because if you see. If you bring out stuff like this and you, you bring out Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. They don't want nothing to do with that. Well, aren't you people in control? They don't want nothing to do with that. You bring that, that scripture out. They don't want nothing to do with that at all. But in the same breath, you know, they'll tell you straight up, you know, pridefully that, yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're running shit. And they are. <laughs> shit. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. Oh, I also wanted to get, um... Galatians 6 and 7. Grab like two more precepts. Galatians 6 and 7, it says, Be not deceived, ye how is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So this man Esau and his progenitor, he's the progenitor of the so-called white race. You know, they got to pay just like how we pay. Our whole entire nation went into slavery. It wasn't like a few of us left back, you know what I'm saying? You know, type of deal, you know. We're, you know, we're under the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. You know, wherever we are, we, we, we're going through it. But overall, Esau got the majority of both of us, man. Some of us is, you know, scattered in um, different places, you know, where, yeah. I mean, we're still oppressed by this man, no matter where we are. So the Lord is not mocked. So they, they're, they're going to have to, what they've, they call it karma. 
or, or you might hear them say what goes up must come down what goes around you know you know comes around type of deal what you do to a person it'll come back on you you know and sometimes hey, it take a little while <laughs> it take a little while hey he sort of had the best of us man for about a good Ooh, we this motherfucker man damn near a millennial man anyway let me get this one too job 34 verse 29 It says, when he giveth quietness. Let me read it in the NLT. The New Living Translation says, but if he chooses to remain quiet, who can criticize him? When he hides his face, no one can find him, whether an individual or a nation. Okay, but no, let me read it in the KJV. Some of these um, translations be a little, a little, little off. Some, you know, some of them, they, they be pretty dope, but. Not feeling that one on this one. Job 34 and 29 in the KJV, King James Version. When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face, who then can behold him, whether it be done against a nation or against a man only? So the point that I wanted to make in that is, you know, hey, the Lord, he deals with nations of people. He deals with the individuals in those nations. But the Lord, he sets kings up. He, he brings them down. Matter of fact, let's get that in Daniel in chapter 4 and verse 17. But the Lord set up, um, set up king, um, kings, man. He, 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 he breaks them down. Daniel 4 and 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men. See? But they don't they don't they don't get it. They don't understand. A lot of these, these they just they don't understand that it's the Lord that's in control of these kingdoms, man. And give it that to whomsoever he will and set it up over him, over it, the basis of men. And that's what we're going through right now. The basis of men is the so-called white man. This motherfucker, man, is silly as hell. He's destroying the very things he needs to live. He don't care. All for money. All for capitalism, man. Motherfucker destroying the water, motherfucker. Don't you need water? You destroying the air, nigga. Don't you need to breathe? <laughs> the foods? You will destroy your own people? You see? Why would you give your people GMO foods, bro? I can see, okay, we're we're we're, we're in captivity. I can see y'all doing that shit to us. But you done done it to your own, your very own people. Right? So yeah, that's pretty much about it, man. Hey, this man has got to pay. He's going to pay for all this type of shit right here. And again, you know what I'm saying? Let's see. Let's check out a few comments. This person says, how come there's never an article about how the kings and queens in Africa profited from the slave trade? This person responded, we're talking about America. And you can't sell something if you don't have a buyer. <laughs> This person says, let me put it this. Let me put it like this. If you did something terrible and unforgivable, would you want to talk about Would you want to talk about? Think about it and constantly take responsibility for it. Uh, seems like, yeah. Now, if you had nothing to do with it, but people that shared the same skin tone as you did those things in the past, would you feel you should be punished? Would it be OK? If your great great grandfather stole from a church and you were held responsible, man, get the hell out of here. See, this is the type of stuff that they're talking about. You know, would you be held responsible for your great great grandfather's um, if he stole something from a, you know? And if the shit is in your possession, they coming to get it. They gonna want to know how you got it. You know. They're, they're, they're going, oh, okay, well, all right, you, you know, you, you might be able to say, well, yeah, my great-great-grandfather, he stole that. And I didn't know where it came from. And you may be able to argue that. And if, if truly you didn't know, you know, then, you know, <laughs> you know, you just thought it was a family heirloom or some crazy shit. But if you're in possession of it and you know how he got it, hey, you're, you're, hey, you, they, can, they, they can come get at you, man. They can come get at you. And see, that's why I went into that, um, that, that um, Isaiah 14 and 21, prepare slaughter for his, uh, for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. They're going to have to pay for what their forefathers done, because guess what? We're still in the hands of them. 
and they're not coming up off of us. It's not like they're letting us go. They don't want to um, give you no reparations or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? They for damn sure will not give you a, a, a you know, a, a parcel of land on the entire planet. Big as this planet is where they can say, well, hey, you know, we fucked y'all over for 400, 500 years. You know what I'm saying? Here's, you know, whatever. Got a nice por- por- parcel of, of, of good, um, 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 fruitful land where you can grow things. You know, it's not like Jake don't have um, technicians and plumbers and, you know, um, um, all, all these different, you know. Jake got, um, um, you know, uh, uh, skilled men in all areas because shit, Jake built America. So it's not like Jake won't be able to get down. <laughs> but they're not about to let y'all go, man. They, they, <laughs> Esau is not having that shit, uh-uh. Because they know if they let you go, their economy will fall, crash. Because our people do the most spending on the dumb shit, man. Who do you think buying cigarettes? Who do you think buying the most uh, liquor? Who do you think buying the most... You know, all these clothes and shoes and cars and all this shit, man. That's Jake, man. I mean, they get paid off of, of your downfall, man. And they not coming up off of nothing, man. So the Lord going to deal with it. See, this person says, nice job with the pointless clickbait story. Trayvon Logan. Hopefully one day you'll serve an actual purpose in society. Clearly not today. See? This is the way that they see a story like this. What's so wrong with a story like this? Good content. Seemed like they had done some, some research into it. So what the fuck? But see, when it comes to them, they don't want to hear, man. They don't want nothing to do with, 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 with their past, man, so to speak. They, it, it's your people. You can't get around it. It's your people that done this shit and you still have us to this day. So I'm going to end out there, man. I pray that the lesson was edifying. Kwame Shala.